So that's good. Welcome, Yejide. Thank you Thank so you. much for agreeing to do this. Uh, really do appreciate you. I, you know, I was thinking about you and I was thinking about some of the other guests that we've had over the months and years now, actually. Well, no, a year and a bit. And how you guys are very brave and courageous to come on uh, a public space like this to share. And I really do appreciate it. And I know that our followers also appreciate that. So well done. And thank pleasure. you for coming. Thank you. Yeah. That's a pleasure. Honestly. Okay, so, so today we're going to be talking about, um, well, the, the topic is moving from hurt to hope. And it's a conversation about divorce. And I know it's not uh, an easy thing to talk about because nobody wants to go, have to go through that. But I guess today, Yejide Akebuloma has been gracious enough um, to agree to do this. And why she's doing this is because she wants other people to learn from what she's been through. But one thing I need to let everybody know is that she, she's not going to be bashing her ex-husband or and this is more about herself, what she's learned from her journey. So Yejide, can you just start, start off by telling us about what you do um, now, what do you do? I work in special educational needs. I work in education like strategy, so making sure that schools that work with children with special educational needs okay. are implementing policy that, and making reasonable adjustments and doing what they're meant to for the benefit of the young people that they work with. I work closely with um, um, schools. Um, I also work with parents as well. Okay. But just making sure that young people that have special educational needs and disabilities are treated the same way that any other young person is. And that is so important. I'm passionate about social justice, so this is why I do it. Okay. How long have you been doing this for? I've been doing that, this for five years. But prior to that, I was working, I've worked with young people the past 20 years or so, 21 years. So obviously you have a passion for young people, especially uh, those is it just all young um, people with special needs? Yeah, I, no, I've worked with young people with special needs for the past 25 years, but I've worked with young people that have socially excluded for the past um, 20 years, 21 years. Wow. What are, just before we go into, what are some of the reasons why um, young people are socially excluded? I believe it's society. I believe that society does not know that I, I think most I think society doesn't have things in place to um, to meet the needs of most of, of all young people so it's convenient they conveniently can meet the needs of young people that don't are not socially excluded that don't have a, a special educational need or are come from um, a certain type of background okay. and so it's that those things are in place but when it comes to young people that are come from challenged backgrounds, yeah. um, it, it's harder to put those things in place. It's harder to, um, I, I think that's what it is. I think it's harder to address these issues. And um, it, it's changing, So, but it, it's a journey. And there's a lot that more needs to be done. Well done. Well done. So... Um stepping into that role and doing and being passionate about it. I mean, I wish we had more people passionate about things. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all, I've been passionate about it for years now. And it's so funny because it wasn't, I, when I was younger, I mean, I didn't grow up. I mean, I didn't want for anything. But as I grew older, and I think that just looks around me and I don't know what to do. I guess it's a God-given passion. That's what yeah, I Yeah, it must be. It must be. Yeah. Yeah, like someone said, it's a fantastic and key job. It's a, it's a role that um, we need. I'm sure you probably need more people in that role. Um, I think they do. <laughs> okay, so thank you for sharing that. And so let's talk about, um, about you. Um, tell us, you got married later on in years. Um, so yeah, just tell us about your journey. Tell us. Um, I got married late. I was working in um, America at the time. I was working with young offenders, funny enough, no young offenders. Um, I was working in the education department there. And I, um, 
a, an old friend of mine, I went to the University of Joss, okay. and an old friend of mine got in touch with me. We were in touch for a while, and it went on from there. And it, literally, he was the person that I ended up marrying. Okay, but you had, um, did you, you had other boyfriends before? Well, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> but prior to that, I was going out with... Um, some that also live in America. It's amazing how um, you tend, I, I live in England, I've lived in England for quite a while now, but I seem to have like gone out with people that didn't live in America, didn't live in, but before I became a, a Christian, I, I mean, I had boyfriends. Then after that, I um, lived in America, I, but before then, I went to America to visit an uncle of mine, a younger uncle, much younger, and he introduced me to a friend of his. And I we were going out. In fact, it was quite a serious relationship. Okay. But I, it's amazing because we broke up for a while because he wasn't sure what he wanted, and I was fine with that. But um, when he came back to me, I I just knew that this was not the person I was meant to be marrying. Okay. We're still friends today, but um, it, he wasn't the person I thought I should marry. Okay. And then you met your husband. Well, I, we went to University of Just together. He lived in the Caribbean at the time, so we got back in contact with each other. Right. And um, so we were in contact with each other, um, visited, and it, it went from there. And can I just talk? Are you going to ask me questions? Yes, I, go on. Sorry, I, I keep on. And so um, but what, I think the lesson I would say I've learned from that was that um, if you're – you're caught in a person, so to say that, I'll use that old fashioned word, caught in, you're going out with a person. Yeah. You're not, it's not gonna work if you live in two different countries and don't see that much of each other. So I live in America, he lived in the Caribbean. Yeah. And you, you don't really, you might know that person, you might have known that person years ago. And I, knew, I knew him, we were really good friends when we were younger in university. Right. But people change, circumstances change in life. And I guess life happens to people. Yeah. And I, I think life had happened to him and he'd become a different, he, on the surface, he was the same person, right. but I only found out later on that he was a totally, I wouldn't say he was a totally different person, but the things that happened when he was much younger, he was now dealing with them. Right. And most of he, us, uh, yeah. Like most of us. Uh, yeah, that's what happens. And that's what happens. And I, I feel a lot of time we're in denial about, I always believe that. I mean, now I know yeah. that if there is an issue, you deal with it. You, you don't, you can't, you can't be in denial about it. Yeah. In the, I'm, I'm a Christian and I believe that, you know, a lot of Christians think, oh my gosh, let's read the word of God. It will go away. No, mm. the, 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 the fact is you, you've got to knowledge of fact to speak the truth into the situation. Absolutely. If you don't acknowledge the fact, then you're in total denial. But some people think, ah, oh, as long as I you know, read the Bible, pray, it will go away. No, yeah. you've got to acknowledge it as a problem. Yeah. And, and that's what I've learned over the years. And that's what I, I realized um, he hadn't done. Okay. And the problem got worse. Okay. But, but it was a learning process for me as well. And, um, and I'm so glad that I've learned so much over the years. And, I'm the person I am today. Okay. I mean, we're going to get you to talk about some of the things you've learned over the years. Um, but you did say that even before you got married, you knew that there were some things, red flags. Or was it before you, the day or a few days before you got married? It, I, I would say I didn't think there were, I, he, I came, so I came back to England yeah. to um, work, wanted to extend my contract, but I, I, I wanted to come back to England because I wanted to live in England. And he came over to England for the wedding because he lived in the Caribbean. And so he was in England. I was staying with my sister in her flat. He was staying in my flat. And we, of course, we were spending time together. Um, I, I take him time of work and we were together. I remember thinking, hmm, what's going on? Anyway, I got engaged. And the week after the engagement was the wedding. And I, I remember sitting down one day in my sister's flat and just, I didn't realize I was just like so far away. And she said, what's wrong? And I said, I'm not sure if I should be getting married. 
And she said, why? And I said, I, I, I can't even explain it. I'm just not sure. And then she said, um, a broken engagement is better than a broken marriage. I'll, I'll always remember those words because they were so, you know, I, I think back to them on a regular basis. And not because I'm, I'm still in that place, but when I see relationships that were like mine, I, I remember that. And I'm, when she said it, it, and I said, I said, I hear what you're saying, but people have come from all over the world that, um, how can I do that? And, and another thing, she said, that doesn't matter. That, and I said, I, I hear what you're saying, but I've never been married before. So I'm not too sure whether what I'm experiencing is, is, is fair or, yes. or it's just nerves. I'm just nervous, you know, but, you know, wedding, you know, you, you're, it's another phase in your life. You're going to live with another person for the rest of your life. And I, I just didn't understand what I was going through. And I said, because I hadn't been married before, maybe that was why I was feeling the way I was feeling. And it was, it was, I mean, I was just very much my own person. And then I was now going to live with another person for the rest of my life. Mm. And she said, think about it. And I, I said, I would. But I got, I, the week after that, I got married. Wow, do you know? I love I love what um, your sister said. The broken engagement is better than it's better than a better yeah. marriage. She does. I mean, do you know, it's interesting because I've heard a few people who uh, exact thing is you uh, situation you were in where they are thinking, oh, I don't want to go through with this, but it's gone too far. People have come. That's right. Them. And sometimes in cases where people have actually said to their parents, I don't want to do this, the parents have said, you can't break it up. Just go, just marry him, and, and then mm. later on, wow. Okay, so you did marry him, and then I did marry him. But and then going back to what you was, you talked about red, you talked about red flags. Yeah. I think the flags were things like we would before the wedding, we would go out and to the shops, you know, shopping and different things. And I think it was just his manner. There was an unkindness. I, I believe that kindness is such an underrated. Yeah. Um, it, it's so underrated and just like snapping. And I thought, where did this come from? Because I hadn't seen this. And it was as if that was. He was just. I just use the word God because that's what I know. Um, God show me the real him, but I refused to to see that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that he wasn't a nice person. Yeah. I guess under pressure, it, this is the way he came across. Yeah. And so um, this is what I experienced then. Yeah. And so those were the red, that was another red flag. So not living in the country where he lived. I didn't really know this person anymore. I thought I knew who I knew in the past, but I, I didn't know the, him the, at that point in time. And, um, and just the, the snapping. And it, I remember just thinking, mm, I'm not too sure about that. But I, I just kind of thought, you know what, if one's under pressure, let me just ignore it. You know what you said about the kindness thing? I, I, there's a quote, I can't remember what it said, but it's watching how they treat other people. That's right. Around it. That is such a red flag because they might be nice to you, but then how do they treat other people, the wet staff, the, you know, people that they come in contact with outside? But yeah. That's right. Is That's right. And, and when I, before we got married, I went to the Caribbean from America and met his family. Yeah. And lovely family. I mean, I love them, but the, their interactions were not the same as my family, the way I interacted with my family. It was the way they, they would speak to each other. And I remember thinking, that's really strange. And I thought, you know what, not everybody grew up the same way you did. So really <laughs> kind of get over it and don't, don't judge. I remember thinking, don't judge. Mm. But that was another red flag. Okay. That was another red flag. Do you know, let me ask you now, um, this is something I've always wanted to ask um, people. Do you think people from two different backgrounds, I mean, based on this is probably just your own opinion, but people from two different backgrounds, can the marriage work? I, I believe it can, because um, you might be from a certain background, but you, you change. Yeah you can change and you know as you walk through life you know you you're 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 exposed to different things yeah. and and that can change you um i 
answering your question, I believe it, it is possible. But you but it, 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 effort, I guess. It takes a, an effort. You've got to decide this is what you want to do. And with everyone, that even people that have the best marriages in the world, yeah. I, I know they say to me that we work at it. Yeah. So it's working at it and, and deciding that, you know, we love each other, yeah. we're going to make this work. Yeah. But um, so I don't think background should be an issue. I, I know some people will say, if you're from a really wealthy family and this person came from nothing, how would you, do, how would you marry such a person? I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. Yeah. I, I think um, it's about the person. And it's about your relationship with the person. I, I, I think it can work. I think it can. I agree with you. I think it can work. But it's like what you said. It's just making that extra effort. That's right. And both parties, both parties have to. Both parties that's right. willing to. Have to be invested in that relationship. Yes. Yeah. Because I mean, one thing about relationships, I think, also, is that when people don't tolerate each other. So let me give you an example. Even within your family, you guys quarrel. You guys have tips and all of that's right. but you make it work that's because that's what family does so you now imagine right. coming from a different background totally up, a different upbringing you're bound to have challenges but sometimes you are <laughs> you are and I, and I think you know I I think it was I think it was easier for me to I mean there were times that I was shocked and I probably did strike out that why would you do that Okay. But the reason why I think I was so shocked was because it was easier for me to try and understand where he was coming from was because I worked with people from that were hurting. Okay. This is what I, I had done. So I was used to working with people from backgrounds that were yeah. dysfunctional. Right. And so to me, it wasn't a major issue. Right. But um, I, I guess in hindsight, I, you know, I realized that it probably wasn't such a great idea. Hmm. You know, someone just put something that I thought that might be the key. So you may come from different backgrounds, but you have shared values. That's right. Yeah, I think that that might be the key. That's right. Values. Wow. Okay. So go on. So you got married, and so I, I, I got married. So we lived in the Caribbean for a year. Um, and what was that like? It that was. Okay. I mean, living on an island was beautiful. It's a beautiful island, St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, but um, things began to, I, I guess there were unresolved issues in his life when he was young, and I hurt people hurt people. Yes. And, and that's, there was a lot of hurt when he was younger, and not because his parents were wicked, but this was the way it was. His father died when he, his father... His father was an ambassador, and his parents were. His mother was in Lagos at the time. She she wasn't she wasn't Nigerian, and she was in Lagos with him and his brother. And he come back from some posting back to Nigeria, and she was staying with some friends in Lagos. He was staying at a hotel, and they were they were having problems in their marriage. So he, she said, "Look, I can't see you tonight, but come and see the children the next day." And he had a heart attack that night and he died. He died in, um, died in the hotel. So literally the children never got to see him again. Wow. And uh, there was a lot of resentment, resentment towards his mother for that. And, and that was the beginning of uh, the friction between the two of them. So this is a person that loved his mother, yet resented her at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was quite, yeah, and that was what I saw in the Caribbean. I, and that's what I saw in the family. Um, they lovely people as individuals, but as a unit, quite dysfunctional. Okay. But, did, but we didn't, I didn't live on the same um, island as his mother. His mother lived on another island, British Virgin Islands. We lived in, in Nevis. But, but, um, did you try to oh. encourage him to seek help, to get help? I, well, I did. What I even did, what I, I remember once, we went to go and save his mother from war. I think it was Christmas or so, not Christmas, we stayed not, an, another time. And I remember saying to his mother, we went swimming together. Um, well, I can't swim, but we went, in, <laughs> we were, I went swimming with her and somebody else. And I said to her, look, I, I know you love your son, but I, and mum, you're not going to be here forever. I, I feel that you need to sit down. And she's really, you know, match, you're a very tough woman, lovely woman, very tough. I was like, I think you need to sit down and let him know 
how much you love him. Um, I think you need to talk as, as son and mother because I feel that there's a lot of healing that needs to take place. But, um, and you know, I, I saw this in, you know, he would wake up in the night and in the middle of the night and just kind of freak out. And I, the first time I saw it, I thought, this is not, this is, this is not what I, this is not good. But I was like, you know what, your marriage, you were, you're going to make it work. And you, 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 you know, you ma you, your marriage, you love this person, you will make it work. And I remember saying, look, you need to talk to your mother, because I knew that needed to happen. I said, you also probably need counseling. Um, no. It was like a big no. But I remember when I spoke to his mother, his mother said, um, I hear what you're saying, and I like what you're saying, and I, I, I love my son, and I want a relationship with him, and I'm going to try and make it work. But I don't believe they ever did have that conversation. Okay. I spoke to his big brother as well, because um, he had a very cantankerous relationship with his big brother, um, that didn't that didn't work either. And so I I I, I was around people that I I spoke to I got on with on a one to one basis you know loved them, but I I also very very lonely at the same time. Why um, so in while I was there while I was there I I had friends in town. Um, that I met and I, I really got to like, but I I felt I felt very lonely. So how, and I remember thinking, wow, this is when in marriage world you've just got to intervene. But I and I was like, I'm going to make it work. I I made this choice. I'm going to make it work. And, and so after about a year, we came back to England. So sorry, I was just saying that I'm sure you were determined to make it work by the grace of God because you, also because you got married later on, so it was like this thing has to work. Yeah, yeah, and I thought, um, I I think so, and I you know I remember did thinking you have that have um, marriage counselling before you got married. We did have marriage counselling. We we did have marriage counselling, and I we did like we did have marriage counselling. <laughs> And he, he seemed to be saying all the right things, but I think he was saying all the right things because he wanted me to hear all the right things. You know, I, I thought about that later on, yeah. and, and I realized that it was more about what he thought he, I wanted to say. Right, okay. It's, it's, it's interesting what, you said... You wanted, it's, I wanted to hear, sorry. What you yeah. wanted to hear, yeah. It's interesting you said this because I, I was having a conversation a few weeks ago with another lady who is in the process of getting a divorce. And exactly what she said, because I asked her the same question. I said, did you guys go for marriage counseling? And she said, we did. Well, we told them what they wanted us to, we thought, felt they wanted to hear. Which I thought, mm -hmm. like, really? <laughs> and, and, and she agreed. She said she did as well. Yeah, she, she, did as well. she told them. Yeah. That's quite interesting. I, said, what? I mean, I... I was so invested in it. I was so convinced it was um, it was the right thing, and you know, and this was we have marriage counselling in England, okay, and before we went back to the Caribbean, okay. But um, I was, I was, I mean, I did have my doubts because it was um, when I say doubts about uh, at different times, because I remember thinking this kind of behaviour is not what I'm used to. This is not what I've grown up with. But I thought, you know, really, at the end of the day, don't be intolerant. Mm. You know, you know, just you, you, you believe you're meant to be marrying this person, and and that was what was key. Right. And so, work at it. Marriage, from what my understanding was, that people work at marriage. It, yeah. it things didn't just happen naturally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, how did you cope? You said you were lonely. How did you cope? I was lonely. I I would call my I would call home, um, but I. I had friends in town and um, I decided that I wasn't just going to reach out to the people that I was, I was comfortable with, used to. This is like my family and my friends okay. abroad because I would make phone calls. I was going to make it work. Right. And so I, I made a group of friends um, we would, and then I would spend time with my husband. I'd make sure we would go out together. I'd make sure we would stay at home together, you know, watch, you know, watch films and just really enjoy ourselves. And I think life there was better than when we came back. But it was still, 
it was still lonely because of a situation. I, I knew that um, I thought I was, I was working harder than he was, but I don't think it was intentional on his part. I think it was because he just hadn't formed those kind of relationships in the past, just looking at his family, because it was, and, and I use the word dysfunction with a lot of respect for them because I like them as people, even when I say that. But it was because it was dysfunctional. He, he didn't know how to form relationships the right way. Right. Okay. okay, so um, you came back. Came back to England. Oh, and I don't mind. I mean, you don't have to answer this. Were you guys trying for children whilst you were there? Oh, yeah, I, we were. Um, I didn't get pregnant. And then I came back to England. Before I came back to England, I noticed that, um, um, and that I say, I don't know if people know what fibroids are. I'm sure a lot of women that are watching do. I, I realized I, that, you know, there was an issue. So I came to England while I was there. And that's when the doctor told me that I had fibroids. And that, um, so I was, I remember saying to my GP, when I came to England, I'll always remember this. Um, and I said to my GP that, oh my gosh, that I want to have children. What will I do? And um, he said, um, well, you got married, married later. That it probably isn't a good idea. That any child you will have will probably have Down syndrome. This is what my GP said. Wow. And I literally just looked at him, said, thank you so much. And I walked out and I never went back to him again. I was, I was stunned. But um, when I went back to the Caribbean, I, I don't know whether it was a salt water. I, I mean, I, I honestly don't know what it was, but my, the fibroids just started growing from nowhere so much that when I came back to England, when we came back to England eventually, People thought I was like six months pregnant, wow. but there were fibroids. It, it was so bad. And so I, I had to, have, um, I had to have, have them out, but I didn't get the operation where they take them out. Okay. They, they were shrunk. Okay. Um, when I was in America, I, heard, um, I remember reading about that somewhere. And so they were shrunk. But that, that, when they started to shrink, when, when I had the um, procedure, yeah. I, um, they were supposed to come out of scar tissue, but the fibroids were so big that I was actually passing them out. And to cut a long story short, I became really ill and I was hospital for six weeks. Whoa. And I almost died. Um, that's a totally different story. <laughs> wow. Okay. okay. And so after that, because of that procedure, I was told that I, was, um, I went into early menopause. Right. Okay. It threw me into early menopause. And that's why I didn't have children. Okay. Oh. And would I love? Ch I love children. And um, it's so funny. Before I got married, I would have my friends' children come and stay. They'd spend weekends with me. Um, it, it was it was a regular thing. Everybody knew me with loving children, and it was. I regretted it for so long because um, I love children. Um, but I am now at a point where, you know, the things that meant to be will be the things are not meant to be just let them go because I, I i've decided that i don't want to be regret to me is a dirty word i don't want to live in regret no, no. and um i decided not to did and so consider, would i have loved children yeah but i didn't did you guys consider adopting then or i i would have loved to have adopted but i i felt that i could see cr cracks, cracks and i didn't think it was a good idea it would affect the child. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't think it was right okay. to do. Okay, so you got back to England, yeah, and then go on. What, what happened? So we, we came back to England. Um, I got a job straight away. I, I got a job. I, it's amazing, because even when I came back, when um, for a few months, a couple of months, um, I was able to, to get work. So I, I came, I, I got in touch with my old manager as, and this is what I did when I came back. So I went back, went back to work and my husband was looking for a job and couldn't find one. And my um, different people got involved and tried to help him get a job and it, he, he wasn't able to get one. And we were in England, so we came back in 2000 and we got married in 2004. We came back in 2000 and and five and um looked couldn't find and 
it, he, he just became very unkind. But I, I, I mean, I thought he was unkind when we were in the Caribbean, but it just got worse. And I, I felt sorry for him because I thought, you know what, he's a man. He doesn't have a job. Yeah. This is, you know, why wouldn't he be? Um, let's, you know, just, just, you know, let's just like be patient. Never spoke about it. Even when people said, oh, isn't he working? I was like, no, because he's been trying. And but, so we hit him. We were back in, the, we're back in England. And literally he said, well, don't, I don't like the church we go to that. I decided that I want to go back to, um, I want to go to this church. And I, so, and I was actually really involved in it. I ran the teens and, and loved it so much. And I remember, so because he had stopped coming to church completely. Yeah. And so I went to the pastor and I said, I really love it here, but I'm, I, I want my marriage to work. And so I'm going to, I'm going to stop coming. Um, and they were like, wow, you know, and I was like, hey, you know what? My marriage is really important to me. And so I started going to the church that he was going to. Mm-hmm. But amazingly enough, when I started going to it, after a few months, he stopped going. <laughs> it was, I, it was, it was so unreal. But hey, this is what happened. And you know, just we we just did life. You know, we got on with things, and I could the cracks were getting bigger. The cracks were getting bigger. So when did you eventually decide that? Or what happened to the um, breakup? So we we moved from we lived in Croydon, and then we moved to West London. I believe he wanted us. You know, afterwards I realised that he wanted us to move far away from my family because my family lived in the Croydon area, okay. and so he didn't want my family around. And I was very ill when when I was in hospital. I, I remember that incident really well because um and I don't I. I don't want to say he was being nasty. I just don't think he couldn't. He could cope with um, my my being ill. So he was very distant and very aloof. And my family was quite shocked about it. My mother was really shocked. And I think she spoke to him about it. She spoke to a cousin of mine who's male to speak to him about it. But um, I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to get on with it. We moved to West London. Um, and the cracks got bigger. The cracks got bigger. But amazingly enough, I, we went to a fellowship that we had been to for years, and he didn't stop going to that fellowship. So I was quite pleased about it. I, I couldn't continue to go to the fellowship because it was in Croydon. And I remember thinking that, well, as long as he's going, I'm fine. I'm really happy he's going. Yeah. But I, I wasn't able to go. But um, in time, I began to hear certain allegations, and I'm not going to go into that now. And I remember thinking, it's really strange. And I, I thought, this is not good. And I remember where we lived. Someone said something to me and said, I've, n- I've never met you before. And I said, oh, my gosh. And I've lived here for a number of years. And I said, where I live. And she said, oh, you're that person's wife. And I remember thinking, okay, what's going on there? And I, I realized, and I was really busy with work because I, by that time I ran a, a, a bunch of sector organization for the Church of England for young people at risk. And so I was really busy. And I, I, I came home pretty late at night. And well, Friday night and I think Wednesday night or so. But I, and I think that maybe there was a part of me that was in denial. I didn't want to address issues because I knew something wasn't right. But, I, I was just tired. I was just tired. And if the truth be known, I remember thinking that I thought marriage was hard work. <laughs> I thought that marriage is, is meant to be a great thing, that this, this is hard work. And I, I remember I had um, the, the first ship we used to go to, um, the, my cousin's wife, who happens to be my sister-in-law's sister, and I are quite close. And so we would pray, and another cousin's wife, we'd three of us would pray together on a Tuesday. And I remember one day I was at a bus stop waiting for a bus to come, and I remember thinking, this is a mess. Um, This is a real mess. And I remember just sitting there and just, 
I think I just sat on the bus up and cried and I thought, this is a mess. Um, Lord, I remember saying, Lord, I want to come home. I remember saying that. Wow. And, but I, I, that's, I forgot about it. So I remember we were together and um, we, we, just, we would just meet up and pray and, you know, just pray for each other. And my sister-in-law sister said, are you trying to commit suicide? And I was like, what are you talking about? And I was like, of course not. And she said she felt that. And I was like, no. And then suddenly I just stopped. And I remember the bus incident at the bus stop. Yeah. And I said it. And she said, yeah. And she said, you know, a thought comes to mind and we don't know when we act on it. And I said, mm. but I don't plan to do it. Mm. And she said, I understand that. But and I know she said, you, but life has happened to you and you're wary. Mm. And so you've got to be intentional about being careful about these things and, and ensuring that you don't act upon the thoughts. Wow. And, and that's how bad it got. But I, I didn't plan to. And then there was a time that um, in the work that I did, there was a family that was um, a woman that was, well, there were some children that worked. I worked with their mother was um, being beaten by her husband. And there was lots of domestic violence that obviously was affecting the children. So my, my manager and I um, got the woman and her children out of the house okay. while the man wasn't around and put them in a safe house, got them into a safe house. Right. And he, the, the husband was so angry at me that I now became his target. And it was, it was a very dark period because at home, I, I now had, um, uh, things weren't going great yeah. at home. They weren't going well at home. And then at work, um, so. one, one morning I got six text messages and the husband said, I know where you live and I'm going to get you. And literally, I remember getting to work and, and showing my manager and she said, you've got to call the police. And I worked very closely with the police. Yeah. And so I thought, no, she said, yeah, should I call the police? And so I told them to come over and they said they were busy. They would come over the next two hours or so. And they came and they looked at the text messages and they said, why did you tell us to come straight away? And I said, I did. You know, <laughs> I remember laughing and I said, I did. And they said, this is bad that um, you... Um, We've, you've got to, from now on, you've got to leave while it's early. You've got to have somebody with you because I, I would go on a bus. Somebody's got to go to the bus stop with you. And I was like, and the, the, it, we, we were, it was a church, Church of England, but we got our funding from different, the public sector, um, ch different charities, foundations. We were based in the church. And he said that the church can't be open anymore just to anyone for your safety. Mm until we address it. It turned out that he had a criminal history and the police knew about him. And they said that he would have probably acted on it. Wow. And, but I mean, it was a little shock to my system, but I, I felt that it was, I mean, I, 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 that was, I probably that was my lowest period because I thought, I can't believe I'm going through this. All this time, I didn't tell my family what was going on. They had no idea. And I didn't tell them because I wanted my marriage to work so much that, um, I didn't, I didn't want them to hate him. Mm. Um, I, I just didn't want them to hate him. And, I, and I, I don't think I liked him as a person anymore. But I wanted, and maybe because I was, maybe I'll say I, I was probably a very religious Christian at that time. And when I say religious, I, I wasn't, I wasn't being realistic. You know, there's Christian. You know, there's Christianity, but you're still, you're still realistic. You know, with it, and um, I thought, you know, what, it, whatever's going on will go away as long as I didn't let too many people know about it. So they had no idea what was going on, and literally, I was I was going through put downs, like it would, you know, and different things. But again, I say there were days that were good days as well so it wasn't a continuous thing it was um and and that's what i thought you know you know i can make this thing work we can make this thing work you know and, yeah today and, can oh. i interrupt you for a bit because i know that a lot of people do this exactly what you just described where you think okay i want the marriage to work i'm not going to tell everyone but what advice would you give anyone who is going through that right now where you're trying to protect your marriage. You don't want your family to know. Well, how, do you, how do you balance things out where, of course, you want to protect your marriage and also, you, well, you need to talk to someone. 
So how do you balance that? I, I would say you, you do need to. And, and even if you say to them, look, I really want it to work. So even though I want you involved, yeah. be involved, but please, you know, walk in love to this person. And, and I know my family, they would. Okay. But I would say do that. Because, again, I say hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And he was hurt, so he hurt me. But what I realized, I think my turning point was um, um, one day, and I, you know, I say this, this was my, not my finest hour, this particular incident. I went to uh, a grocery store and I was in a hurry. I was in front of the queue and there was one man in front of the queue and it was a really long queue. And he was just really taking his time and deliberately putting things, not paying. And we waited a really long time for him. And... I remember saying to him, I mean, after a while, I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I remember just saying that if you haven't got anyone to go home to, I do. And the look he gave me was, I thought he was going to burst into tears. Oh, wow. And I, I, was so, I was so disappointed in myself. But, um, I was so disappointed in myself that day. And that's when I realized that you needed to, you really need to get help here today because you become this person that you're not. And because hurt people hurt people. And I, and I become hurt. I was so hurt and broken. And I really, I was so unkind to that man. I'll, I'll never forget it. And that's not. And that's when I knew that I had to address the issues that I was becoming the person that I shouldn't be. I had to address the issues that needed to be addressed. Sorry. I didn't expect to do this. Sorry. You want to get... And so that's when I realized that I needed to... Um, but I'm fine, honestly. I, need, I, I remember... I you know, because it was just a look he gave me that... I remember thinking, I just didn't know what he was going through, you know, and so what if he was behaving that way? And as I said, kindness is so underrated and I'd become this person that I, I hate, you know? I, you know I, I started to do things that I would never normally have done. And that's when I knew that um, situations had to change. And I sat down with my husband and I said, this isn't working. You, this is what our marriage it should be and I, I didn't do this on my own I did it on my um, with my my cousin a male cousin okay. I spoke to him first and he said come and see me with him I'll ask him to come uh, and see me and then you you walk in we didn't come in together and then I walked in and then um he um he said he spoke to him and he said look this is a situation and my ex-husband got really upset and he said no there's nothing wrong and I said actually there is that I can't, I can't do this anymore, that, you know, you've got to be invested in this marriage. It, to, it takes two to make a marriage work. I'm ready to make, try and make it work. Right. But I got to know that you want to make it work. And, and, and that's when he said, I don't want to be married to you anymore. Okay. And I said, I mean, it, 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 I don't think it shocked me. It hurt me, but I don't think it shocked me. But he didn't leave. So I said, okay, to let me know when you're going. Right. And it took another, um, probably another, another six months okay. before he left. But by that time, I told my mother, I told my mother and my sister. Right. And my sister said, what she did say at the time was that, are you sure that I know that you want this to work? And I said, um, I am sure, you know, I remember saying that to her, I'm sure about it. So my mother apparently went to see him with a friend of hers okay. and she didn't want to go and see him alone. And I guess it, it was the best thing, you know, and she said, look, you know, and I, 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 from my, my understanding, because he said your mother came to see me today. This was after work. Right. And I said, did she? And he said she was very, very nice to him, but she just was very matter of fact right. that what are your plans for my daughter? Right. And he he told her that he thought he was going. I don't think she said to him, when are you going? You know, it was like, she just wanted to know what was going on. Yeah. And this went on for, for about um, six months where, and, I, and 
literally, I would, when he said that, I, there was still part of me that still wanted it to work. Yeah. And I said, um, so when he said I was going, I was like, I, I didn't say anything. Because I thought, you know what, let's try, still try and make this work. I mean, total denial, total denial. I, I can't even understand. And, you know, you, you want to be married for life. You want it to work and yeah. you, you put everything into it. Yeah. But I realized that I was falling apart at work. Um, I would go into work and somebody would say, yeah, Jay, that, can I have just supervision today? And I'm, I'm kind of listening to what she's saying, this particular, she was a young woman's worker. We had young people, young women, you know, young girls tend to be very be, um, involved in very risk-taking behavior. Yeah. And the things that, I mean, things that happened that were shocking and one got raped, so many other things. And I remember thinking, I can't, I love this job, but I can't do this job and go through what I'm going through. And um, <laughs> I, one day I said to my manager, I can't do this anymore. I'm resigning. And she said, yeah, today you love what you do. And I said, I do. I love it so much. Yeah. But if I'm going to, I'm not doing, I'm doing a disservice to, to my, my the people I manage and to the children. Right. And I think that was towards the end that I said that I, I needed to, to step down. Okay. And I said, but I won't step down until this was in at the beginning of October um, 2000 and 2010, beginning of October 2010, no, um, in September 2010, I said I will wait until um, you find someone else. I said, but I, I am going to step down. And, and she said, fine. Because what I found was that I literally would go into work and sometimes when nobody was in the office, I would just be sobbing. And I... I, I thought I can't do this anymore. I and sometimes I had to go to work in a coffee shop because I didn't want to cry in front of the people that I managed. Yes. I, I would go to my um to my so the, the the vicar was my line manager and she, she she it was you know she had this house nearby the church and I would she I would step into the house talk and I'd just start and I, I said I can't do this anymore and she was like we'll work through it and I said it, it's it's not fair I I can't do this anymore. But amazingly enough, um, in that October, um, when my husband said, I'm going, because I, I, there was something that we were addressing, some behavioral thing that he had done, something he had done, I would normally say, I would not say, I wouldn't say anything. Right. But that day I said, when are you going? I, I don't know whether what I said the way I said it, I think it's the way I said it. He must have thought she means it this time. And he said, I'm, I'm going next week. Okay. And I said, okay. And that, you know, I, I remember that night I cried. I cried so much. I cried for, um, I think I was more in a relationship that I, 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 I want the relationship I wanted, I thought I had. I, I, I thought I could have. Yes. Not that I thought I had, but I could have. Yeah. But it was the beginning of, I think it was the beginning of the rest of my life. Mm. It, 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 so it was, and, and literally the day he left, I just cried. I, I cried so much. And um, by that time, I'd stepped down from work and no, I haven't actually stepped down from work yet. I was still at work. I was still at work, sorry. And um, I would go to work, but um, I would come back and I would just cry. You know, this was my life. I, I mean, I, I didn't realize you could cry so much. I didn't realize I had that many tears in me. I, it was like, wow, you know, I literally was. And sometimes I would howl. I had this favorite rug in my sitting room and I would sit on it and I would just cry or I would howl and I think I remember thinking my neighbors think I'm crazy but it was it was it was healing for me because I'm um, literally every day I was getting stronger and stronger until one day it just didn't hurt as much and I think the turning again there was another turning point for me in November I think it was November beginning of November it's been that long now my mother had a car accident in 2010 she was knocked down by a, she was knocked down by a car okay. um she was left for dead 
and she was like in the hospital for four months. Um, she had to have plastic surgery and so much happened. But the day she was locked down, I was shocked when my sister called to tell me. And I think what happened at that point in time was that the focus went from being on me to her. Yeah. And so because of that, yeah. it, it just helped me to heal. Okay. And it was great that I, needed, I, was there, I was able to be there for someone that needed me to be there for her. And I remember it was, I was off work a lot during that time. So when I came back, that's when I said to my manager that I know that I said I would work indefinitely, but I'm stopping now. Okay. And then that's when I stopped. And I, I stopped work for a few months just, just to try and decide what I was going to do next. Okay. Um, someone just asked, like, did you get counseling or therapy? Actually? Oh, um, after, you know, we, sorry, we did, we, we went for cu uh, couples therapy, funny enough, before we broke up. And the, um, the, um, the counselor, the counselor said to me, we, we, he saw us together and he saw us as um, individuals. And <laughs> I'll always remember the very last session, he said to me, I'm so sorry to have to tell you this, but he's going to leave you. And I said, you don't know, you don't know my, you're not, how do you know? You're not God. And I said, and I was so, I was so upset with him that I was like, no way. And I, I was stunned. I, I came out, I was weeping. I called my cousin and he said, he's not God. You know, let's just pray. But um, the more we prayed, it was as if it just got worse. It just got worse. Did I have cancer? I had, I think I didn't get canceling until much later, years later, but I had a lot of really strong friends around me and strong relationships and they just spoke into my life and they spoke sense and they, they made me feel valuable. They made me feel, um, they, they just, they were just, it, I just felt so, I just, how's the, what, 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 what can I say? They made me feel, better about myself. I felt supported. I felt protected. Okay. I felt protected. That's the word. They, are, they made me feel so protected. I was going to ask this because a lot of times when people go through divorce or separation, one of the challenges is this issue of shame or failure. But I guess right. the support that you had, you did that help, did it? Or did you still have I think that, feelings like no. that? Uh, it's so funny because I, I felt like a failure initially as, as a wife. And um, I felt, I don't think I ever felt the shame of being divorced. I, if I did, I can't remember it. I do remember in 2012, I went to work for about just under two months with the Clean Foundation in, in Nigeria, the Criminal Justice NGO. And I remember one of the colleagues come into my table and he said to me, so are you married? Because that's, you know, that's the Nigerian thing. I said, no, I was. She said, did you have children? I said, no. And she looked at me shocked. And I said, she said, so she, 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 then she said, you didn't have children. You're not married and you, didn't, you don't have children. And I said to her, and, and I knew that it was then, I knew that. I was totally healed mm -hmm. because I said, you know what? It's not a problem for me. Is it a problem for you? Cause it really isn't a problem for me. And I didn't, I wasn't upset with her. I, I remember just thinking, honestly, it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. I am so happy with my life. Mm -hmm. And that's when I knew that I was totally healed. Fantastic. That's really good. That's really good. And yes, it's someone just put, is the marriage that failed. You did fail. But society, mm. you know, you have to be married to... Sometimes people just make you feel that you have to marry to have any value at all in life. Which is That's right. So wrong. That's so not true. That's right. So but you see, my, I think my response to her, because this was literally the first week I got there, okay. but just before I left, she, she came to me and she said, I like you so much, <laughs> you know, that I can't believe you're going. And it was a totally different relationship. And um, I, I feel that we go through shame, we go through, life happens and we go through things in life. Yeah. 
but I feel it's the way we we see ourselves that people will see us yes and if we're not ashamed of ourselves if we don't feel like failures then people won't see us that way oh I love that please can you repeat that just repeat it for everyone if we're not ashamed of ourselves and if we don't see ourselves as failures, people won't see us that way. But then I guess that also, that has to come from a sense of knowing that you have value, that you have worth and you don't have It does. Yeah. It does. It does. It does. That. And, and I've always thought my worth isn't in what other people think of me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, is, it is not that because really I can't control what other people think of me. No. no. But I, as a person, believe that I need to be the best version of myself that I can be. Absolutely. And it's exhibiting the things that I would like to see in other people, yes. towards other people yes. in my life, so, and, and behaving in, 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 in that way towards other people. And fine, I don't always get it right. I, I love people. That's why I always work, that's why I work with people. I, I, I can't understand why I love people. I don't always get it right. But um, I'm, I'm real, it's so funny because my sister gets really irritated. <laughs> um, I, I'm a people watcher and um, I, I watch people all the time and I take bits of, I, I realize I take bits of things that I like in people and I try and, you know, behave that way or this. Or I want it to, to be who I am. And I remember years ago we were with a group of friends and I didn't know we were sitting down talking and I remember saying something that, and my sister said, you're not all from Israel today, but <laughs> this opera thing that you're always doing. <laughs> and I realized that she didn't say in a nasty way. She just said, you usually behave, you know, because I literally watch people and I, maybe because I work with young people, so I'm constantly watching them, trying to understand where they're coming from, trying to understand how I can help them. Yeah. And uh, I remember when she said it, we all, we, I had to laugh because I knew that I was doing that. I went into that mode. And um, I, I, I don't know why I lost my train of thought when I said what I said just now. But it's, um, I don't know, there was a question you asked and, that, and that's why I said about, it. about um, self-worth and um, knowing, that, knowing that you are valued. Yeah, so, and I think because of that, I because I, the way I am, I, I, I kind of like think about, I, I, I won't say I talk to myself, but I, um, I spend a lot of time just in self in, in thought, just trying to process my thoughts and understand why I've done certain things and yeah. where I'm coming from. And, and, and you know, I, I try and process my thoughts. And even if I behave a certain way, why do I behave that way? How could I do better next time? And that, that's really important to me. Oh, wow, that's so great. Thank you. So, what are the lessons that you can share with us? You know, you've come through or gone through all of this. What are the lessons that you can share, lessons learned with us? Um, lessons. Um... I would say um, be realistic. <laughs> okay, what do you mean? Be realistic. What do you mean by that? Be, be realistic about um, what's going on around you, what you see. Okay. You, you know, if what you see will not change, if, if it presents a certain way, it is what it is. Mm. Do not think that it's going to be any different. You know, I... Is this be realistic even before or during the marriage? Before. Before you go into a, 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 a relationship like that. Because um, we really do change. People people change, but it's, it's very rare that people do change. You know, you and a lot of women, what I find is that we tend to go into a marriage thinking, that person will change. I can change that person. And I don't think at the time I actually felt that way. I just felt that. But maybe I did. Maybe my subconscious I did. Mm. But um, people, people don't change. People don't change. Yeah. Or, or, or people can change, but not because you want them to change. Well, because they people change, change because they've gone through a life-changing situation okay. and they've decided to change. But they won't change 
because you want them to change. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So be realistic. What else? Um, let me see. Um, I think value yourself. Um, okay. you, you've got to, self-esteem is not, um, it's not over, overrated. Yeah, I'll use that word. Um, you, you've got to love yourself because if you don't love yourself, nobody else can love you. And you've got to love yourself. You've got to. Um, I, yeah, Julia, can we speak into this? Because sometimes people go into marriage thinking that the man or the woman, because it works both ways, uh, will complete them. Will... Mm. So can you... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and if the truth be known, in hindsight, I probably thought, you know, and it's so funny because I didn't like self-esteem. I've never, I mean, my 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 family members will tell you, and my friends will tell you that I'm, I'm a very strong human being. But when, when I was even really young, I was really bullshit. And, and literally in school, my friends, I went to ISI, and my friends would say, you know, I, was, I had a group of friends that were also naughty. So I didn't like self-esteem in, in any way. But um, I, I think maybe, maybe I thought I didn't like self-esteem. Maybe because I was marrying later than I thought I would marry. I was, I w I wanted to get married. Yeah. I maybe that's why I, I decided to, to, to maybe there was a part of me that did. Okay. Maybe there was a part of me that did, and I wasn't as confident as I, I thought I was at that point in time. You know, even this issue, you said you wanted to get married because you were married, you got married later on. Was there, did you have any pressure from, is it family or friends or was it just society that made you feel, look, I'm getting on, I need to get married? I didn't have pressure from anyone. I think maybe, if anything, maybe society, but I, I didn't feel, I didn't feel pressurized to get married okay. by anyone. Okay. I didn't, the family definitely not, um, friends, no, okay. no, I, I, there was a part of me that wanted to get married possibly because I wanted to get married, I wanted to have children, okay. so un unconsciously I might have been given, putting pressure on myself, Right. but I can't say I remember actually thinking, oh, I must get married, I must get married, I mean, I have friends that in the past would say, oh, I need to get married, as not to me, but as individuals, but I've always thought why but maybe even though i didn't think it i didn't think i thought it yeah. that it in you know, my subconscious it was the way i felt at the back of your mind yeah okay. at the back of my mind yes okay so be realistic um love yourself have self worth mm. what else mm. um Hey gosh, this is a hard one. That's a hard question. <laughs> what was the question again? So what are the lessons you learned? Or, lessons. I mean, I know you talked about the red flags um, initially. Yeah, I've spoken about the red flags, yeah. Um, hmm. Well, maybe those are... Maybe, those, uh, maybe that's I what... Um, I'm trying to think... Um, You, I, I, what I learned about myself was that, yeah. sorry, no, go on. I was going to say what I learned about myself was that I, I felt after marriage, I felt my, my, my marriage was, my life was never going to be the same again. I felt that I would never achieve the things that I dreamt of achieving. Really? I felt my life. Why? I think I was just so broken. Broken, okay. And I just thought. And literally, I came out of there with nothing in that. Literally, I stopped work. Um, I remember just literally, there was a, before I started work again, but I needed to stop work for, to actually build, you know, to get back together. I, I had a rug, as I said, and I sat on the rug. I would cry on the rug. I would sit on the rug. But I got stronger each day. Right. But I mean, I, and then I had a really good friend. I had a good, really good male friend and we grew up together and he would come to him, he was married and he'd come to his wife and children and literally he would once a month see me and we'd go for, to Victoria Station, we met at Victoria Station and 
you know, what what he was doing was, without realizing it, was, you know, he would sing as, ah, oh, you look good, you know, and it was as if, oh, you say God again, I felt as if God wanted me to know that, he wanted to build up my self-esteem again, yeah. and, and, and literally, that's what that did for me. Right. It, it, I, I needed that in, in, and I remember when I, in the church I went to Kensington Temple, I joined the welcome team and I was there for five years. I was myself and one a man who we were head in the welcome team, so there was male and female. I left the welcome team to just before COVID, or, and I remember they were saying, Why are you leaving? and I couldn't understand why I needed to go. But I knew I needed to go. And then one day I remember going back in and saying, because my time ahead was up, and I was like, I remember the person that headed that started it said, What does that mean? That's nonsense. What kind of statement is that? And I, I remember saying to him that I realized that I came here because there was so much self preservation in my life mm-hmm. after my the breakdown of my marriage. But I interacted mainly with really amazing men. Mm-hmm. And it's as if God wanted to show me that, you know, even if you never got married again, that there were, there were men that loved their wives, that loved their families, and there were examples of what um, Christian men should be. Right. And I saw that. Right. And that literally got rid of self-preservation in my life. Because up until then, I did have a lot of self-preservation in my life. So that was such a big lesson I learned just interacting with them. You know, I was so close to each and every one of them. Yeah. I mean, I'm still quite close to a few of them where they say, when are you coming back? And I'm like, I'm not coming back kind of thing. Yeah. But um, it, it was such a, a great lesson to learn about myself, yeah. knowing that um, yeah. self-preservation had to go yeah. because it was very present in my life. And it, even, if, even if it wasn't about a relationship, it was affecting other areas of my life. But going back to this male friend of mine, he said, um, I think years later, we met at Victoria Station as usual, and he said, you've changed. He said, my gosh, you're different. That you're, wow, there's just something about you. And I said, he said, you've become a different person. This is, those are the words he used, he used. And I said, no, I haven't. This is who I always, always was. Mm. I've, just, I've just become me. I've once more, I've become me. Yeah. And I remember when I said it, I thought, I literally, during the, because of my experience, had become this person that I didn't know. Wow. And it's literally when my life got back together again, yeah. I became a person that God created me to be. And that's who I am today. I love that. I love that. You're the person God created you to be with or without marriage. And you didn't that's manage right. to be that person. I didn't need to manage the bit. Wow. Now, last, one last thing um, you said. You said that throughout all of this, you become closer to God. Remember you said you were a religious uh, person. I was. <laughs> but now, I was. Um, share a little bit about that. How you- I, I think I needed to... Look, so somebody said to me, did you have to go through what you did to be the person you are today? I said, it's a really good question because I can't answer it. Mm. I, can't, I said, I'm not God, so I, I can't answer that. But I do know that the day my, my husband left, it's as if the, you know, God broke open the prison doors in my life. That's the way I can only really describe it. And um, I could see, I could see things differently. And I, I, as I said, I was very religious. And now, you know, I can spot religion from like, a, a mile away and think, oh, gosh, I can't deal with that. And I look at it and think, wow, was I like that? This is scary, Lord, you know, but I like, oh my gosh, this is, wow, you know, and I, I'm actually, I mean, it's very hypocritical, but I'm actually very intolerant of religion because I'm like, that's a religious spirit, please get rid of it. But that's how I don't even want it around me because I feel so free. Mm. I feel, sometimes I feel so free that I don't want it to, I don't want it to get hold of me again. I, 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 um, what is religion? Um, it is, it, you know, God created us to be free to, in his image, yeah. to be free to, to, 
to to be his um his um what's the word we are to people around us what is represent he wants us to his representatives and I don't think I was a good representative. I was like, I wasn't at all. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, there were rules and regulations mm. and it was like, we followed those rules and regulations. But that's not freedom, that's bondage. Mm. And, and so anytime that comes near me now, I'm like, no, nah, go away. Go, go far away from me. And I, I didn't know it was that, like that at the time, but in hindsight, I realized that. It's quite possible that was off putting for my husband as well, even though I think he had his own issues that he had to deal with. Yeah. And but I, I won't say that I wasn't without fault in that marriage. I'm sure that I must have been. I'm sure I must have been. Because you can't have I couldn't have come to that realization afterwards and then um not have affected another person. Yeah. yeah. That was you know, I was living close in close proximity to. Yeah. There was no way. On a side note, do you still see him? Do you talk to him at all? Um, no, deliberately. Um, still, he's got my number. From time to time, he'll say happy birthday. I might say, I will say happy birthday. Okay. He will say, can we meet up? And I say, no. I know it's a close chapter in my life and I don't resent him in any way. I remember, you know, I remember someone saying, mm -hmm. why, you, why don't you block him? I don't feel the urge to block him. I, I just don't, it's who I am. And really, it, to me, it's no big deal. Well, would I meet up with him? No, no, no. you know. And, and it's, um, I, a few years ago, a friend of mine that, it's so funny, I've got this really close friend, is in Nigeria, and she, um, she said, I, I don't, she just, she didn't agree um, in, she wasn't happy that we got divorced. And I said, you know, I wasn't happy I got divorced myself, but hey, this is what it was, you know, kind of thing. And then years later, she said she wanted to meet me. She wanted to take me to the spa. She came to England because she comes to England a lot. And I said, fine, let's go. And she said, um, and then she said a few things to me that she'd heard that was said about me. And I, she was shocked and she was so upset. And she said, now she understands and she said i'm so sorry and i said honestly i know that um i can look back i remember my um, my um sister-in-law's sister's husband who's actually my cousin so i said my cousin saying that one thing i i know about you is that you can look back and you did it, you know you did everything possible to make your marriage work and I, I did, I did, did. I was, was I always the same? Probably not, but I wanted it to work. And did I want it to work for the right reasons? There was a part of it that probably wanted it to work because I still wanted to be a married woman, mm -hmm. but I also wanted it to work because at the time I did love him. At the time, I did want us to have a future together. Okay. And, and for that reason, I, I did everything possible. But the, when I knew it was time to let it go, I, I, I let it go. And I feel a, another lesson, you were asking about lessons, is, and I'm not, I do not advocate divorce. No. I do not advocate no. divorce. But That's if not what we're saying here. You're, That's not what we're saying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, no, but, but if, if, that, if you're, happening. no, I was about to say, if, if, a, if a, a person threatens violence towards you, yeah. you need to leave yeah. the house yeah. until that, that's rectified. I remember my, um, my uh, cousin's wife, um, her husband is dead now, but she, she asked me to come and stay with her for a while. Okay because she was so, because he was abroad, and she asked me to come and stay because they were worried that something would happen to me. And I said, but I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared of him. Okay. I was shocked okay. on different occasions that, that you would actually try and do that. Okay. But I always remember when I said, um, I work as a police, that if you, if you hit me, yeah. I will call the police. And he looked at me and he put his hand down, and it never happened again. 
Wow. Thank you so much, Yejide. This has been so helpful. Also, one, sorry, one more thing. Um, I, I've, what I, do I hate him? Not even a tiny bit. And I feel at this point in time in my life, my relationship with God is the most important thing in my life. And I saw my relationship with him. If I was going to dislike him or hate him, my relationship with God was like a pipe. And that pipe needed to be clean. It couldn't be, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to let it be blocked with unforgiveness or anything. Because if, if it, I, I, I just needed to know that that relationship was what it was, had to be. And so for that reason, I decided that I am not going to hate this man. And literally was like, Lord, you're just going to give me the strength not to do so. But I, and, that, and that's why, you know, I can, I, we don't talk. We, um, we, he will communicate. I won't, I mean, I, if he calls me, I'll talk to him. Okay. It's not an issue. When his mother died a couple of years ago, he called me and I spoke to him. And I said, I'm so sorry. Right. You know, and I even asked if he wanted me to meet him and he was really kind of broken. He said, not now. Okay. But, um, but I, I, I decided that I didn't want my relationship. I think that it was probably a selfish reason, but I didn't want my relationship with God to be affected. Thank you. Well, this has been, um, I, I actually, I love your vulnerability and uh, I, we appreciated everyone on the platform. And I really do hope that everyone that's listened and people that will listen later on will learn from your lessons. Um, like Yeji, they said, we are not advocating for divorce, but there are times when you might need to get out, especially if violence is involved. And then even if it's not violence, it might just be you get to a stage where things you just decide that things are not going to work out. He's not going to change or you're not going to change. Um, but again, she did say, try to speak to people. So that is someone you did mention that mm. talk to someone, um, seek help. Uh, and, yeah. But um, thank you, Yejide, so, so Thank you for having me. I really do love you. I appreciate you. Thank you. And I'm so happy for, like you said, now you're not a religious person. <laughs> you have a relationship. And that's what we all, that's what we all um, should be doing. Where we have a relationship, a personal relationship, not religion. Um, that's you're, right. It's not going to get you anywhere. And you're just stuck. It's painful. <laughs> it's painful. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's painful. I, you know, it's funny. The other day I said to my husband, I said, can you have love, the love of God without obedience to God? Can you answer that? Can you have can you love God without being obedient? Okay, or the two. Or uh, can, the two? can you? I think I think two go together. You know, you you love a person. You'll be obedient to a person that you love. Yeah, but sometimes we can be obedient just out of duty. Just out of duty. Yes. But um, it's not it's not true obedience, is it? Okay. It's um. I mean, God sees for us, so He knows that we're not. You know, it's like. He and you know again I say I and I don't say this you know saying oh my gosh these Christianese people you know people say that but I believe that God allowed me to go through this me to be the person I am today yeah. I'm so convinced nobody can tell me otherwise that I I've never I feel like the prison doors are open to my life Woo! and <laughs> anything is possible honestly I just feel so free I love that. I, I, I I love the life I have now um. And I'm not even talking about the, the fringe benefits or anything, but the the joy, mm -hmm. the Lord literally is my strength. And you know, I I just I just love the life that I have really in Christ. I love that. I love that. She loves the love, uh, the life that she has in Christ, and no one can ever take that away from you. No. Nobody can take it away. Right, thank you so much, Yesterday, we really That's a pleasure. Can we show her the